five books every Disney fan should read. Welcome to Unlocking the Magic YouTube. We're going to talk about five books, whether you read books or listen to them on audio, you should read if you're a Disney fan. Whether you're going to the parks or not, if you love Disney, these are five books that we recommend. We get asked this question all the time. What's our, what are some books to get me excited for my next trip? Yep. These are the five that we love and we recommend you check out. And we'll link them all in the show notes below this video. I think that these books are good for even the non-Disney fans. It's a way to get you to like Disney and to, to get excited for your next Walt Disney World vacation. Agreed. Like there's a lot of books out there and we get asked, hey, you know, my husband or my boyfriend or my wife is not super into Disney. How do yeah. I get her excited for our next trip? And reading books and learning about the history can definitely get you in the mood and excited to go to Disney because it gives you a different experience and a different perspective of why the parks are there. So I love these. I actually have the books right next to me, but we're going to start off with number one, One Little Spark. This is from Disney legend Marty Sklar. He's actually written several books and we interviewed him a long time ago. What episode number was that? It was on episode number 81, which we'll link up in the show notes below. So 81 with Marty Sklar, we interviewed him. His other Dream It, Do It. So he has two books that I, we suggest. This is the one that we like because it's good for kids. It's good for, um, you know, the whole family to read, not just the adults. This is Mickey's Ten Commandments and the Road to Imagineering. He has interviewed in Imagineers, Disney Imagineers. He talks about, to them, he talks about how to become the, the path on how to become an Imagineer, it's actually probably not what you might think, which I found really interesting about this book. And really what was cool too is that he talks a lot about the some of the attractions. Yes. And I, I really love this book. It's really fun, lighthearted read. Like Bruce said, it's even good for kids. Yes. So if you're not a, a huge reader like me, I love audio books. Yeah. I was even able to read that one. It was a really easy read, really quick read. So yeah. we also interviewed Marty where we talked about his favorite attraction. We mm -hmm. talked about how we got started with the Walt Disney World Company and how we actually wrote for Walt. Right. So if you want to check out that episode, it's below. It's a really, really good episode with Marty Sklar. The next one, it's kind of a cute story by Rolly Crump, another Disney Imagineer that we had the honor to interview. I actually don't have that book in front of me, but great story, great great author, yes. great Imagineer, great person. He was a lot of fun to have on the show. Marty's different. He's unique. He's not, he's an outside of the box thinker. And you he's mean not Rolly. Your, yeah, Rolly, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. And he's not your typical artist when you think. He was very artistic and creative with his design. And we talked about that with him. And we talked yeah. about how uh, he got started with the Walt Disney World Company. And, you know, his involvement with even the Haunted Mansion and how he came up with these uh, home of the weird, it was called. And yeah. Walt didn't really know what to do with it. But that was an interesting story. So he has a lot of good stories in that book. I highly suggest you read that one as well. Again, he talks about his involvement with some of the most iconic attractions. It really gets you to really get to know the 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 person behind this incredible park. So I really, I recommend that one. That's a good one. Kind of a cute story. Kind of a cute name for a book it is <laughs> right yeah okay next one how to be like walt that's a good one i do i have that one in front of me no i don't have that one in front of me but that one is something i feel like you read a lot before you actually really started loving going to walt disney definitely World. it definitely gives you a, a, a look into how he thinks yes and what he goes into the process of putting people in the right spot and how he built the company and how he never gave up. And I think that's a good aspect to kind of talk about when you're going to Walt Disney World with somebody that's yeah. not super interested in like, they think Disney World is just rides. Right. Oh, the, book, not. the book is behind you. I yeah, just it's a great it. book. That yeah. one is available on audio, which I'll link up below because it's okay. a long one. So it's, it's like, a long one. I think it's four or five hours on audiobook. Okay. So it's a good one if you're on a real long road trip or maybe you're commuting back and forth to work and you want to just kind of listen to that and get some behind the scenes history of the Walt Disney World Company. That's a great book. It's lessons, right? Lessons and how to how to be like Walt, like how to incorporate Walt in your life, his philosophy. Like yeah. Bruce said, it's really inspiring and encouraging because you know that, you know, obviously these people that he worked with had incredible talent, but they were just regular folks at the end of the day. And it really makes you re realize that anything is truly possible. So yeah, like Walt that. Disney was a very intelligent person, obviously, and he was very ambitious. But one of his best things, yeah. attributes okay as a leader or as an entrepreneur was finding what people's hidden talents are or maybe talents that they didn't even know they had and putting them in the best place for them to succeed yes and he took people out of spots that maybe they thought they were good at put them in things 
and worked on projects that they wouldn't think that they would want to work on that, and they thrived. Right. And that's really his philosophy, and that's what he was really great at, and that's how he built such an amazing company. I love it. Ella, he's like the most incredible kind of coach, and yeah, yeah, he was Perfect. great at it. All right, next one. We are already at Walt Disney, an American original. That one I do have right next to me, and this one is actually one that I recommend reading. I've of course, I recommend reading all of these, but this one I actually bring with me on the airplane a lot. So I bring it with me on a trip to Walt Disney World. I've read it like a hundred times, but it's just fun. It's a fun book. It's long. So you, I don't necessarily expect you to read the old book on a flight, but it, if you've already read it at home once and you want to bring it on the plane ride with you, if you have a three, four hour flight, it's really fun to just kind of go through it and just see, like pick out the things that really were special for you. And I, I really felt like I got to know Walt Disney from this book. Which, that is a deep yeah. dive into the history of himself, how he yeah. grew up and how he worked even before he built the Walt Disney Company. Like what all even like the failures that he had. Right. And it was great to story to hear. Not that you want to hear about anybody's failures, but yeah. you the failures is what made him who he was and how and it really I don't think Walt Disney would have built the company he did without his early failures. And he said that in many interviews himself. Yeah, I mean, failure is a part of your story. It's how you learn, it's how you learn sometimes to appreciate things and it makes you grow as a person. It's incredible to see someone with such success. You don't necessarily think about the hard road that he had to take in order to get to where he, all you see is the is the shiny express uh, success and the the statues that he got, you know, the, yeah. the awards or whatever. You don't really think about how he had to overcome so many obstacles like everyone else, you know. That it reminds me of that interview, or not the interview, but the conversation he had on that movie, uh, Saving Mr. Banks with P.L. Travers, where he's like, I know what you think of me. You think I'm just some uh, Hollywood persona that has the Midas touch and everything I have turned to gold easily. And then he yeah. kind of goes into telling her his backstory of how he grew up. And that book kind of talks more about that. So you get mm -hmm. the, you get to appreciate what he built and not just, oh, it's just a Disney movie. It's a silly kid's ride or a silly kid's movie. You get to appreciate why he did what he did. Right. I agree. And this one's actually worn out. I need a new one. I'm like really wearing the, wearing the book out, but it's a great book and I love it. Okay. Next one. Hold great. on. I'm not oh. sure if, if the audio version of that book is available, but I know some oh. of these have audio versions. And if you're like me, you like to listen to them while you're doing something else. So if they are available, I will link up all the audio versions and a link to all of the books in the description below. Okay. Next one. I am Walt Disney by Brad Meltzer. We had him on the show. We did. He was on episode number 244, I believe it was. I was yes. so nervous interviewing him because I've seen him on TV. Yeah. He's just such an incredible guy. Not that he made me nervous. I just wanted to not stumble on my words, which I, if you guys listen to the podcast a lot, I often do that. Actually, I do that here on YouTube a lot too. I mean, I'm human. This book is great for kids. It's great to sit down with them and have a great read about Walt Disney, the person. And again, just another way to get to know the story behind all these parks and the story behind this incredible person that had so such great abilities. And Yeah. And it's good for your kids too, because maybe they see Walt Disney World, they don't actually know that that was an actual person. Right. Who actually did all of that. So yeah. it's maybe a good book for them, younger kids. <laughs> exactly. Who can appreciate the book, read it, watch, uh, look at the pictures, and, and it's an easy read for them that where they get to understand the history behind the company as well versus you just having to tell them and they have blank look in their eyes because they don't want you to tell them anything. <laughs> yeah, like our, our kids often do that. Right. That was the, our list, but I, I actually save one as a bonus. This is just a fun one that I've been doing lately, uh, especially with quarantine. This is the unofficial Disney Parks Cookbook by Ashley Craft, and I actually have been pouring these. We don't often cook Disney foods at home just because it, sometimes it makes us sad. Like we, we vowed to never make Tonga toast. Yes, yeah, so I'm not making Tonga <laughs> toast at home. I know everybody keeps sending me the recipes, but it's not the same. I don't want to do it. It's not the same, but I will say one of the, one of our favorites here is guest on cinnamon rolls and she has here laid out the recipe and it's just a really fun way to pass the time and bring Disney at home. Yeah. So if you're watching this video, yes, let us know if you've read any of these books and maybe which one of these is your favorite, or if it's a favorite Disney book that you have, that's not on our list. Drop it in the comments below because we're always on the lookout for either Disney history or books about Disney that we can add to our list and suggest people who listen to or watch this show. Yeah. Uh, we want to give them some books as well because it's a question we probably get asked a ton. Right. What book should I read? Right. Now we just created this video so we can just be like, you know what? Here you go. <laughs> there go it check is. out this video and those are the five books we suggest you read, but they'll also be able to read your comments. So leave them below. Awesome. And All we'll right.
That's good? Yes. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye, everybody.